Hey guys, I just want to mention a few things. There's lots of stuff that I really want to talk about, really, but I don't want to take the time to make the videos right now. But so I, mess, I mentioned a couple verses uh, in the last video dealing with easy believism, dealing with discipleship and salvation. <clears throat> How Jesus said that if any man wants to be my disciple, he must hate his mother, his father, his brother, his sister, even his own self. And then he says, you know, he also must bear his cross and I think that I didn't fully explain those verses better there's other things that could be said about them I said that basically Jesus you know as far as hating your father mother hating yourself Jesus wants to be first in your life but it's also Jesus is Jesus is uh, he's talking about counting the cost he's saying what uh, the cost of discipleship is and the cost of discipleship is that you could possibly have problems in your relationship with your mother or father or sister or brother because of being a, a disciple of Christ and also a cost is you may have to put aside your own goals your own ambitions you know your own selfish desires for the cause of Christ Okay, so that's, that's what Jesus is talking about, basically, I think. He's talking about the cost of discipleship and also bearing your cross. You know, the cost uh, could be physically death, you know, but it's also, <clears throat> it's also death to yourself, okay? And this is, uh, and these things also are kind of, are kind of the results of salvation in a way. Uh, what it truly means to be a disciple of Christ. Uh, so, you know, these things could happen. And so you can't separate, you know, forgiveness and, and being a disciple. You can't get forgiveness without being a disciple of Jesus Christ. A person has to make that choice if they're going to be a disciple of Christ, if they're going to serve Christ, if they're going to submit to Him, if they're going to repent and place their trust in him that's what salvation is um, but also let me think okay so I'm getting further and further away from believing in the the millenni a physical literal millennial kingdom and uh, there's a few different popular theologies that that would include you know one is amillennialism uh, well, that might be one of the only ones, actually. I don't know. I have a lot of study to do on this, but, you know, amillennialism basically means no millennium, and that's basically how I see it now. I think that John's seeing a vision in Revelation 20. I think it's more of a general thing, and I need to go over it more, but, you know, he says that he sees God judging all the dead, you know, and, and judging them uh, by what's written in the book and casting them into the lake of fire. And I just see this general idea that John's having this vision that all, you know, everyone's going to be judged. You know, all the wicked people are going to have what's coming to them in the end. Uh, you know, individually, one by one. Uh, but over time, everyone will have that judgment. And so, we just, we have to remember, you know, that it's a vision. And these things are symbolic. And the thousand years could easily mean, you know, forever. Um, the only issue that seems to be is that lo Satan is loosed for a while. So I don't know, you know, how to really interpret that. But it seems to make sense that, you know, it says that those who were beheaded or whatever, they served, they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And, you know, it's easy to understand that as forever. Okay, that would... That would be consistent with what we see, you know, in other passages, you know. Uh, you know, with eternal life and, and everything else. So, but I, I wanted to ask, you know, if people have understood this uh, pre-millennial, millennial reign stuff, like I believe for the past year or so, because it's so popularly taught. And, um, you know, I always thought it was odd that the wicked, wicked sinners go to hell when they die, the unbelievers, 
and then later on at some point they're all going to be resurrected somehow and then they're going to get another judgment and then they're going to a place called the lake of fire so you know it's commonly taught that hell is the place is the temporary place for the damned and then you know the lake of fire is the the future permanent place and it never really made sense to me okay and i think that's because it's not true okay hell is the lake of fire everyone is judged at the moment of death and we see in the bible in lots of places you know like matthew 25 or whatever the the, ju the judgment of the sheep and the goats which i want to go over again i've mentioned probably a few times but it's a parable and i see this general idea in that too where jesus judges everyone some are saved some are not some will inherit the kingdom they'll inherit eternal life and the others will be cast into hellfire and outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth and so and so you know that's what we see we see heaven and hell heaven and hell heaven and hell and so the lake of fire is hell okay there's no there's no waiting to be judged again resurrected to be judged again it's at death they're going to be judged right then and there and be there for eternity and so i don't see a physical literal millennial kingdom in the scriptures okay and people would debate that there's passages in the old testament that that prove it or that point to it and you know i have to go over those things but usually people start with revelation 20 and they'll say see here's the thousand years they reign with christ a thousand years and then they go back to the old testament and they say see this all ties into that okay but uh i think that's kind of a backwards way of looking at it uh, because if revelation 20 didn't talk about a thousand years then we probably nobody would probably get that idea out of anything else in the bible so uh, i do believe that the second coming is probably you know just christ coming at the moment of death um but anyways i just want to mention that doesn't it seem weird that people teach that the damned will be resurrected and then they'll be judged again and then they'll go into a, another place called the lake of fire it just seems so bizarre and it's it, it doesn't you know seem to make sense really if you think about it if you get yourself out of that out of that box okay and uh, i was thinking today too i see the phrase the end of the world and maybe not in every case but in some cases i think that could be at the end of uh, at, at death also um <clears throat> like jesus says you know i'm with you until the end of the world okay so i'm with you until you know your body dies you know and then i'm with you of course always then after that too um but i think that could be the idea and then there's the parable of the wheat and the tares and it says you know at the end of the world basically the there will be judgment or you know the the tares will be gathered and burned into the fire so that seems to make sense to me there's only a few fa phrases that say that a few verses or whatever but then there's one matthew 24 where it talks about you know the gospel will be preached unto all the world and then the end and i don't know what the end is there i don't know how to interpret that really right now so the daniel 70th week stuff is some stuff that's kind of uh that i'm uncertain about but anyway i would like to talk about calvinism and stuff too i guess i could talk about it a little bit i had a pretty long debate with somebody the other day about calvinists and uh about calvinism and i can i can't really talk to calvinists that long i can debate with them like in one setting and then after that i'm done but he kept trying to push me basically to ask me if jesus died for all sins you know and i said yes and then you know he says well did jesus die for unbelief you know is in, is unbelief a sin and the thing is that no jesus didn't die for unbelief okay yes jesus died for all sins but a person must uh have faith in christ to receive that free gift and and jesus talks about you know unpardonable sin and he talks and there's many, there's verses that say you know he who doesn't believe is damned already you know he who believes and baptized will be saved but he who you know he who doesn't believe you know isn't saved whatever uh so basically 
this Calvinist tried to say, well, we all were unbelievers at one point, so then we're all eternally damned. Uh, no, uh, because what what can't be forgiven is if a person dies in the state of unbelief. Okay. At any time, a person can you know repent and turn to Christ, and and believe on Him. Then they are forgiven for all their sins. But if they never believe on Him and they continually live in the state of unbelief until their death, then they can't be forgiven because they never wanted to receive that free gift that only comes through faith. So, I hope that makes sense. I need to talk about that over. Talk about that more. I still want to finish up on this first Calvinism study that I got. I was looking at it today. I haven't even looked at it for a couple of weeks, for a while. So this will be my first full week of work, hopefully. And I want to try to get a schedule. I want to try to come home every day. I want to read a chapter out of a book, you know, and try to read a chapter out of the Bible, and work on a study. And so hopefully, you know, by the end of the weekend, I'll have something to do. But this will be my first week. And I'll see how it goes. But uh, I said that I wanted to get some really, I want to get the general doctrines about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, you know, salvation, just some basic things on the website and, and videos for that stuff, studies. So that's that's my goal for this month and into next month. So hopefully uh, that goes well. So. That's the plan. So, God bless, guys.